at um, another cada cadaver. This is Table 12 from the fall of 2009. And this is the left posterior triangle of the neck. The pin is holding a very small omohyoid that was cut and reflected. Here's the sternocleidomastoid. Um, this is the round sternal tendon or sternal head. And the clavicular head looks like it's been actually cut and maybe removed. I don't see it right now. But here's the pectoralis major. The, the middle third of the clavicle, again, was removed. Um, so this is the clavicular head of the pectoralis major. They have already done the pectoral dissection. There's the sternocostal head of the pectoralis major. And then this is the pectoralis minor. So I'm going to reflect those. And you can see the posterior triangle of the neck um, very easily. Um, here's the anterior edge of the trapezius here. Um, the muscular floor of this dissection isn't as easily seen as the previous um, dissection, but this is the levator scapulae. Here's the anterior scalene. You can see the shiny uh, tendon of the anterior scalene going to the first rib. There's the first rib. Um, here's the subclavian artery emerging deep from deep. Um, to the anterior scalene or posterior to the anterior scalene and these are the rami of the brachial plexus like we saw on the other cadaver. There's C5, C6, C7, and then C8 and T1 are posterior to the anterior uh, to the subclavian artery. So what we're going to look at on this cadaver are the arteries. Um, this is the suprascapular artery and it should be more inferiorly located in the posterior triangle of the neck, um, just superior to the clavicle. The um, book describes the suprascapular artery as passing inferior laterally across the posterior triangle of the neck. It crosses the anterior scalene. It's going to cross the subclavian artery. This is the third part of the subclavian artery. Crosses the um, trunks of the brachial plexus. And then it's headed for the suprascapular notch area along with the suprascapular nerve, which is right here, coming off the upper trunk of the brachial plexus. So that artery and that nerve, as well as the omohyoid, if I had the omohyoid still intact and it was maybe larger, you could see that all three of those structures are headed for the same or a similar area on the scapula, that suprascapular notch. The suprascapular artery is going to go over the suprascapular ligament, which spans the notch, and the suprascapular nerve is going to go under the ligament, um, so in a tunnel that's created by the ligament and the suprascapular notch. The omohyoid muscle, which would be headed the same direction, is attached to the superior border of the scapula, just lateral, no, medial, excuse me, medial to the suprascapular notch. So when you're doing this dissection, look for those three structures headed for the same thing. The suprascapular artery, suprascapular nerve, excuse me, suprascapular nerve, and the omohyoid. The suprascapular artery is usually a branch off the thyrocervical trunk, and the thyrocervical trunk arises from the first part of the subclavian artery, which is medial to the anterior scaling. Suprascapular artery is going to supply the posterior scapular muscles. This is the transverse cervical artery. Transverse cervical artery is also crossing the anterior scaling, crossing the trunks of the brachial plexus, and then it's going to go to the trapezius. So here's the trapezius, and the transverse cervical artery is going to um, help supply the trapezius. Those two arteries, transverse cervical and suprascapular, also help supply the collateral circulation around the scapula. The transverse cervical artery um, also usually arises from the thyrocervical trunk, but there is considerable variation in how this artery um, or where this artery originates. Um, it can arise from, or it can also be known as the cervicodorsal trunk, um, which was identified in 2005 or named in 2005. Um, 
and it can bifurcate into the superficial cervical artery and the dorsal scapular artery, or the dorsal scapular artery can arise independently, um, and that is what's happening here. Here's, let me get a probe. Here's the dorsal scapular artery, um, and it's emerging from deep to the anterior scalene, and it's passing between the trunks of the brachial plexus, there and then it's going to go deep in the triangle to help supply blood to the levator scapulae and the rhomboids major and minor. So I believe that's the dorsal scapular nerve. There's considerable variation in the origination of the transverse cervical artery and the dorsal scapular artery so your cadaver might not look um, like this. So check your atlas in the textbook for descriptions of um, the variations and how those arteries originate.